you're an estate agent in 2023, the first week of March, and you read the newspapers and the doom mangas of what's exactly happening in the property market, then you might as well pack your bags, close your doors, cancel your right move subscriptions and go home because it really is end of the world. Or is it? Bad news sells newspapers. And at the end of the day, thing, things are quite tough out there in the property market because it is a reflection of the economy. And we can all look at house price indexes. And yes, everyone you talk to, house prices that are being achieved today are not what is was being achieved in the silly season of the back end of 21 and early 22. So when the indexes come out, of course, house prices are going to be lower. But the purpose of this show, which is the UK property market stat show, is to analyze what is happening now and what actually drives asking prices and actually what drives, more importantly, the prices are being achieved. Because the British have this obsession with house prices. And if you're an estate or letting agent, you shouldn't really mind or care what's happening to house prices. What you should be worrying is, am I getting enough transactions to make enough money? More importantly, to help someone move from one chapter of their life to the other. Each week, we have the UK Property Stat Show, joined by someone who is a who-who of UK estate agency to give their thoughts and guidance on exactly what's happening to the top end of the funnel, what's coming on the market, house price reductions, what's selling, what's falling through. And today, it doesn't get much bigger than the IMAC himself, Ian McKenzie, who is the boss man of the Guild of Property Professionals. Uh, and, and I think he also is responsible for fine and country and other such awesomenesses as well. So basically, he has the finger on the pulse of over eight or nine or nearly a thousand estate agents around the UK. So if he doesn't know what's happening, God help us all. Ian, thanks for joining us today. Chris, thank you very much for inviting me. Really looking forward to it. That's a pleasure. And just so you're for everyone's benefit, then Ian will be joining us on a rotation basis every month or so. So we look forward to seeing you uh, on the next one, as long as you pass your audition today, my friend. Yeah, I'm no, sure no, you're pressure. no pressure then, Chris. Eh? Okay. So, boys and girls, um, really what we do is we, we the, the show will go as follows. We'll start at the top end and look at the national figures. And when we look at the national figures, we'll start off with basically listings, houses coming on the market. Then we'll see what's being reduced. Then we'll see what's being sold. Then we'll, we'll see what's what's falling through to give you an idea of what's happening. We'll then go and look at the regional markets and then we'll go and focus on a particular town. And I don't know if anyone knows, but um, Ian comes from the beautiful town. It's not a city, is it? Of Winchester, it is a town, it's, isn't it? it? It's, a, it's a city. Yeah, it's a city. city. Yeah. So it has a cathedral. It's got a cathedral. It's the ex-capital of Wessex, King Alfred. Beautiful, beautiful. I, I watched a documentary on that, I can remember. Um, I've been to Winchester a few times. Beautiful place. And, yeah. and what we're going to do is we're going to focus on the Winchester. So if you're a Winchester agent, check it out. Remember, if you're an estate agent and you want to see how you are performing in your town, then probably just send a, a message in to me through the usual social media platforms, and I will consider your town. Right, shall we kick off, Ian? Less, less of me... Yeah less of me talking and um and more of me talking so or less right okay let's just have a look okay so can you see oh hold on a second just keep talking mate um because i need to hold on just the bloody um swap computers and it's not letting me share my screen okay well, i'm hoping you can swap your screen because i've only got one screen today instead of two so otherwise i would have the slides up i'm very much looking forward to talking about winchester and winchester is an interesting uh, conundrum in that you've got some very very good agents there and one of the things that you find in in a turbulent marketplace is that the agents without cartel just react intuitively to the conditions and i'll be interested to see if that's happening uh, with micro data good stuff right well we've now now my new computer i've, I've given it permission so you should be able to see on your screen some some gorgeous figures can you confirm okay. good stuff so we're kicking off with the number of listings and we've got Four, four sets of data on, on the listings. I think what I'd like to do is let's just have a quick look at them all first, and then we can then have a chat. So that is the number of listings solely in this week, week eight, which in today's week eight in 2023 was Monday the 20th of Feb to Sunday the 26th of Feb. 
Yeah. Obviously, that will fall in different years, but basically 32,459 listings in 20 in week eight. So we'll just have a quick look at the figures of what houses are coming on the market for. The accumulative number of listings that we've got up from 1st of Jan to the end of week eight. And then yeah. finally, uh, put on a graph the, the, the number of listings per week uh, just to show the trend. So let's go back to the top. Yeah. So anything of interest there, my friend? Just really encouraging figures, very strong, robust, uh, taking into consideration half term in parts of the UK as well, because you do sometimes see a downturn of instructions in half term. I think that that's pretty positive. Um, th th that's the macro data, obviously, from a micro perspective. And I know we're going to talk regionally in a moment, but in your towns and locations, you really do need to think about um, is it the right price and type of property that's coming to the market? So what's the supply versus the demand? in minutiae in terms of what applicants are looking for, et cetera. Um, and uh, are you overvaluing? I mean, we'll, we'll see some data in the moment. Are agents out there buying the instruction, which is a con real concern to me at the moment, but that's still happening. Well, we do have, we have some data on that and we have that split down by region and there is some slightly concern, uh, some, some concerning uh, areas, but also there's some areas that are picking their socks up. So whether they've been watching our show or not, I don't know. Okay, so again, nothing out of the ordinary there, is there? So no, not at all. Good, good, robust set of figures. Okay, so next, let's have a look at the average listing price. Now, th this this has been co of concern to me simply yeah. because, and I'll just I'll just whilst I I look at that, the you know is some people said is this overvaluing, but I think overvaluing has been around since Adam was a boy, don't you think? Yeah, it always has. Yeah, buying the instruction. Uh, agents buy the instruction yeah. through fee yeah. and price. Even when you had hair, the people were value overvaluing, weren't they? Absolutely. Yeah. And that was many, which many was only, years ago. Which only a couple of weeks ago, because you put in your hair yeah. you put in your leg, mate. It so, went when I was 26. <laughs> okay, I mean, just to give you an idea, um, the average, um, so the, the, the average listing price that has been coming on the market since the new year has been £418,000. But the average asking, the average price of the property sold to bit the contract, yeah, is three hundred and three hundred forty-six thousand. Yeah, I've got some stats on this, which which shows it in a better visual detail. But I just yeah. think now I've been saying it, but and people say, Chris, you're going on about the same old crap. Yeah, it is the same old crap because it's the same stuff. What what you're listing and what's actually selling are two slightly different things. Are you noticing yeah. that yourself? No, I did. I did notice that, and there's some stats later on, particularly around price reductions and the percentage of price reductions, etc., that really ring true with this as well. But th this this graph is it could be a, a mixture of things. It could be opportunism, people downsizing, um, the the race for space, people still thinking about lifestyles, etc., and moving to different parts of the UK, particularly with um, work environments. We've we've sort of gone through COVID. We've gone through the working from home scenarios of business. Um, the, the cities, city uh, workers are often now thinking about working Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursdays. So again, working from home at weekends, elongated weekend process. So it, it is enabling people to change their lifestyle. So it could be that there's opportunism. It could be that there's downsizing. There's an element of overpricing. I do think that they, and we'll talk about this a lot today in terms of being more precise or exact to the customer to give them a better and honest overview of actually the assets that they've got and the equity that they've got. Um, and there is an element of wrong stock, but it's very difficult as an agent to think about the wrong stock when you're presented with a good house in the right location with a roughly right price and a board up outside. It's very difficult to turn the instructions down. And especially those bigger houses that might not be selling as well. Yeah. Normally on good thoroughfares, it might wrap someone out to put their three bed semi on the market for the house they always wanted. It's a difficult one, isn't it? Yeah, it really is. And and let's not forget that the passive and active marketplace is a different thing in 2023 than it used to be in 1990, 2000, before, before the portal started. So that's a, just something else to think about. Okay, let's, let's move on now. And a couple of weeks ago, so we've introduced, this is the second week we've done it, is the cumulative number of listings. So, yeah. you know, it's all very good looking at week one, but again, week one, one week in isolation, you know, uh, doesn't make, so therefore this is the total number of listings 
year to date in all the years going back to 17. Yeah. Interestingly, that listings were quite low in 21, 22, and people were screaming for stock. No yeah. excuse now, is there? No, but it's not a huge change, is it? And it probably needs it needs more change to change the supply and demand curve. Um, so, so I still think that prices will hold better than many people think because of a lack of supply. Indeed, indeed. Let's move on and look at the trends. Now, again, you know, I, I've purposely chosen uh, 19, 18 and 2017 simply because going forward, though, and I know you can say they're more like normal years and people say, well, they were Brexit years. They're not normal years. Well, you give me, is there such a thing as a normal year, Ian? I think the normal years were 20, 2005 to 2010 and then 210 to 215. Why? Because you had a five-year parliament in all of those periods. I think from 2015 onwards, we've had three general elections and a Brexit and lots of turbulence. So whilst we are using this those years as the metric for average, if you look at transactional volume, the transactional volume from 2016 onwards is actually below the previous 10 years. I think that as, as Peter Knight says, that it's the new normal and you just go yeah. and deal with what's in front of you. You can't look back. I think the, the big thing I want to just stress to estate agents is just don't compare yourself to the last two years because the last two years have been a bit crazy, haven't they? Correct. And yeah, I think, correct. and and again, I think it's a weakness of estate agents, not a criticism, that is that we're not very good at looking at the long term when in reality, just take a step back. And again, yeah. I know we're all at the coal face, but you just take a step back half a day a month and just take, well, go and look at your CRMs, look at, look at your numbers and see how yeah. you compare. But again, the, the, these figures are quite reassuring to an agent because they, you know, memories are short and they will remember 2019 and the transactions that they delivered in that time and you know this is a uh, ben described it last week as a very vanilla slide in that it's nothing exciting going on here it's tracking at an okay level i actually think that the market this year is going to be brilliant for a good estate agent well it's interesting I'll, and i want to talk when you when it's appropriate th there are some people out there that are that are saying that we're going to get house price reductions of 35%. And I definitely believe that prices are lower than they were being achieved when city people were putting in city prices. Yeah. But my concern is transaction numbers and people getting a bigger slice of the small, a bit of a smaller pie, but we'll come on to that. Right, really let's move really on is. to uh, price changes. Um, yeah. This shows that agents are certainly working their stock. And again, we, do, we are going to be sharing some stats in terms of the percentages, but that's not you know that that's that's good news that's agents working their stock isn't it yeah it is yeah the average price reduction uh is 4.5 percent as as mentioned by zoopla this morning um now as a practicing agent in a town um i think it's very easy if you're running a business to say go and reduce your stock by five percent across the board and the problem with that is that you can be chasing shadows because if you've put the house onto the market at 10 percent over over value then you're still chasing the shadow in that you're too high. So whilst this is meaningful data in terms of the volume, it's relatively consistent. Uh, there is an upward trend there. Um, one, week's, one week is interesting. Two weeks uh, is um, starts to form a pattern. Three weeks is a trend. So in three weeks' time, we can see what's happening with the price reductions, et cetera. Well, well inter uh, interestingly, the average number of price reductions this year has, I mean, in total, there have been 132,169 reductions. Yeah. And the average number of reductions per week has been 16,500. Okay. That shows now, in terms of available stock, we are agents are actually reducing about 7.2% of their stock right. per month at the moment. I've just managed to get the, the national stock figures uh, from our data providers, the name who shall not re remain nameless until towards the end, because Ben Madden says that I mentioned their name too much, but when they're giving you so much data, you have to recognize them, but we won't mention yeah. it yet. We all know, we all know it begins with the letter T, um, but we're going to compare, we're going to see what percentage of stock is being reduced per month going forward. And yeah. we've got the data going back to 2019 which i think is really good um the average price of properties being reduced um this week is at 395 now uh you know um the average is that the, is that the end price or the beginning price the beginning price it's interesting so we're listing at 422 
but price, redu price reduction at 395. So the difference between the two is 5%, which is interesting in itself. Um, so clearly the agents are starting to work the stock. The question I've got is that are they working it enough or is it, are they doing stepping stones in terms of pricing? Um, who knows? I, don't, I haven't got the answer to that one. No. Right. Let's now move on to sale agreeds. And on the face of that, that doesn't look particularly good, does it? It doesn't. It's half term week as we as we mentioned. So there's usually a bit of a dip in a, in a half term week in isolation. But again, we needed to see what the next weeks uh, deliver in terms of trend. The other thing that I'd be really interested in if I were running uh, a business in the coal face is applicant levels. How many applicants are registering? What's the inquiry levels? What's my viewing to sell ratios? All those sorts of things. They're the real micro data that help individual agents in individual towns. Well, let me share with you some data. Now, this is obviously gross sales, okay? Yeah. With, and we're going to come on to net sales. Those of you who are watching, gross sales is when you slap a sold on it. Yeah. Net sales is each week you might put you might sell 10 houses and two will fall, not two of the 10 will fall through, but two of the sales will fall through between sale yeah. agreed and sort of and exchange contracts. Apologies for anyone who I'm teaching grants or kegs, but some people watching this aren't aware of this. So therefore. In a week where you sell 10 and sales fall through on two, which could have been going on for months, the sale, that's yeah. an eight net sales. OK, we're going to come on to that. Now, this is interesting. That is a dooming. That doesn't look very good. But no. would it surprise you that this is the best week for sales since the 26th of September? From a net perspective. From a net, from a gross pr perspective. That's interesting. Okay. Right, so that, that would indicate that would indicate that this exactly what you just said and the, the phrase i call it is swap net swap net is a fantastic game that no one wins because it is uh, effectively as you've already alluded to it's when you sell a house you put it under contract goes through the lawyers and or conveyances and for whatever reason it falls through you then re-agree it again but all you've actually done from the seller's perspective is delay their move or not you all that happens is that it delays the move but from an estate agent's perspective sadly you've damaged your cash flow so swap mate is a game that nobody really wants to play. There you go. I mean, uh, let's move on. Thank you for that. Um, let's now move on to the what is actually selling, the average asking price of the stuff that is selling. So this week, the average asking price of the properties that went under offer and sold up the contract was 351000 Okay. Yeah. The average this, and again, we've said this, We've said this already, but we'll just just in case you weren't everyone wasn't listening. I'll just move the thing. Hold on. The so the average this month, uh, sorry, since the start of the year has been three hundred and forty six thousand, but okay. the proper the average price of the property coming on the market has been hold on four hundred and eighteen. So right. that we have do have some stats on this broken yeah. down by price band towards the end. Um, in fact, no, I'll tell you what, mate, let's, let's go and have a look at it now, just for, for, yeah. for, for poo and giggles, okay? Here we go. So um, you should be able to see a little graph there. Yeah. Now, okay. And what basically what we've done is we've split down into price bands. Yeah. Blue, in terms of, we've, we've so the blue is listings, houses on the market, and we've put them all into one big pile and split them up into price ranges and then apportion the percentage of, of the big of the pie. Yeah. So five. So if you look here, five point eight percent of the houses that came on the market since January the first have been under a hundred thousand pounds. So obviously they're going to be in the northwest, yeah. northeast. Yeah. yeah. But seven point two percent of the houses that have sold have been a hundred of uh, under a hundred thousand. And look here, that under two hundred and fifty thousand pounds, there are more houses selling than coming on the market. Yeah. In terms of percentage sold, yeah. not actual numbers, but the percentage we are then hold on. We'll save that one to the end. Um, this this particular graph here. Sorry. Then we got the 250, 300. So there's an equilibrium. But then look afterwards how the blues yeah. which is things are higher than the yellows, which is the sales. Yeah. Which means there is a balance of imbalance of 24.3 percent proportionally between what's selling and what's coming on the market. And that's uh, this, of course, is whole of UK. So, so a four hundred thousand pound house in the north is very different to a four house four hundred thousand pound property in the in London and southeast. So that's the the one thing. The regional variances will wash this through. 
So it may not be, whilst it looks like a issue in the macro, in the local marketplaces, it may not be such a problem. Well, it's interesting because we do have some regional numbers, which we're going to look through in yeah. a minute. OK, whilst we're on sales, this is just a nice little stat. This is the, the and again, I appreciate the numbers are that you might not. But basically, if you've got you've got 300, 400, 500. This is the total number of properties that are in estate agents pipelines on a month by month basis right. from January 19 through to Christmas. Interesting. Isn't it? I haven't seen this one before. That's an interesting stat. Hey, you really see, really see the the peaks in the in the throffy months, don't you, of twenty one and twenty two? Yes. Starting to fall down again. That's the, that's a downward trending graph, isn't it? Now it is. But what I think what we need to do is wait for the Jan and Feb and March figures yes. to decide whether whether they are. I mean, what I am hearing from a lot of estate agencies is, is that the Liz Trust budget really did yeah. clear out a lot of sales and now people are starting to build them back up again yeah uh, it, it sort of makes sense because if you're looking f if you're buying a property at five six seven hundred thousand pounds in parts of the uk mm -hmm. and you're relatively high loan to value from a mortgage perspective why would you actually commit yourself to something not knowing what the interest rate is going to be right. or sign up or sign up to a at the time with trustonomics a six percent fixed rate well we're, we're already the guilt, guilt rates has already dropped and the gap between guilt and um, borrowing rates has already changed. And it is worth saying in February of last year, the base rate was at 0.25%. And in February of this year, it's at 4%. So there has been a huge shift in terms of the cost of borrowing, um, which uh, has no doubt impacted the market. But you asked a question at the very beginning, Chris, and it's just worth picking up on this point. What drives the housing market? And without doubt, it is sentiment. Con confidence drives the housing market. There's a great graph that I show Guild members, which is if interest rates alone were the only thing that drove the housing market, by definition, when they're at 0.01% at the um, during the global financial crisis, there should have been more transactions. Whereas the reality of the truth is that there were more tra there was more transactional volume when interest rates were at 15.4% than when they were at 0.1. And the optimum level in the UK for the last 25 years is when interest rates were at 7.8%. There you go. It's all, it, we are human beings and we're dealing with homes, not houses. Yeah. And, and, and I think as estate agents, we need to remember that, that people still need to move home. And even in the depths of the depression of the credit crunch, yeah. the people still moving. You've just got to make sure. Don't worry about house prices. Correct. It, the base, yeah. And we, we know that the base, the, the must moves, the um, forced forced moves, is, in my mind, is about 800,000 transactions a year. Because we, how do we know that? Because in 2009, that's how many transactions that we had. That's the base level and everything else is a bit of a bonus. And anything, anything else is discretionary, yeah. Okay, so we've done the price already. Let's move on and talk about the cumulative gross sales year to date. And again, the problem with that graph is, is that 21 and 22 makes 23 look quite small. But in reality, we're not a million miles off 18, 19 or 20. But again, boys and girls, if gross sales, and we'll go come on to net sales in a second, even if net gross sales are lower, that means there's going to be fewer transactions which yeah. means you need a bigger slice of the pie. You cannot rely on the stuff just coming to you. You're going to have to get out there and get your marketing. I mean, it's interesting, Ian, over the weekend, I published an article that um, when, when cash flow gets a bit tight, it, one of the easiest things to drop is, is, is marketing. And again, boys and girls, right portal marketing is not going to get you any more vendors. It's more marketing on how to get more vendors yeah. to use you. And it's one of the first thing that gets dropped. And it's the one thing that's going to bloody well save you to have yeah, a bit of slice of the pie. Why Chris, I, do they do that? Couldn't, I couldn't agree with you more on that particular point. So as I say to many Guild members when I see them, when you first set up, when you first opened your agency, you backed yourself. You backed yourself. You had no pipeline. You had a dream and you had a pitch. Um, and you invested in, in the future economy of your business by actually spending on marketing. Do the same thing now. The portals deliver to you the active marketplace. They only deliver to you people that are actually thinking and looking and actively doing something about house move. You've got to stimulate the passive marketplace. 20 years ago, that was really easy. We were in the newspapers, it landed on a doormat and people said, oh, look, look, love, this house is on the market, shall we go and view it? That was a passive marketplace. 
So in today's, you've got to come up with new strategies from a marketing perspective, which you do, Chris, we do, um, and lots of other companies do to actually stimulate people that are thinking or would move if the opportunity came. Good stuff. Great to hear. Right, let's move on. Next stat. This is gross sales again. The average number of gross sales per week uh, done on a timeline. Yeah. Again, we're not we're not looking at at 2021 20, 22 because um, because tw I mean 20 okay for the first start was normal until March when we got COVID hit. Yeah. But I'm not doing it from then on because it was a silly market. You know, it was 20 was all over the place. So yeah. I'm comparing us with 19, 18, and 17. You know, as Ben Madden said last week, middle of the road. Yeah, and it's, and it's starting to trend upwards, isn't it? Last two weeks on the trot of an upward, three. So uh, three weeks becomes a formal trend, in my opinion. I think that that's actually going to improve as the months, uh, the weeks and months go on, because in those other months we had elections and various other things that would have taken a, a slight downturn on activity. Let's move on to sale fall throughs because we started with gross sales. We're now yeah. going to go on to uh, fall throughs, and then we will then have a look at net sales. Okay, so the average number of fall throughs this week is 4,830. From feedback that I got, I thought it was wise that we actually looked at the seven year weekly average. Okay, interesting. Okay, so that's a new addition because we listen to feedback. If you've got feedback, put it on YouTube, send me a, a WhatsApp message or whatever message, social media. And the average number of fall throughs per week is 5,299, going back to 2016. Yes. So Again, this number by itself is I think it really comes down to what what it, what it does as a percentage. So we'll yeah, go, yeah. we'll look at that. So again, the number of net sales is seventeen thousand eight hundred and twenty four, which yeah. is really end of the world, isn't it? Yeah, so there's a bit of swap net going on. Definitely okay, then. it is that's a that's a lower figure than you'd want to see. But what what if I told you it was the best since the twelfth of September? Uh, there you go, you would, boys and girls. Then, then yeah, you would say that there's green shoots of recovery. It's there the you go. normalizing. The market's normalizing. So so it's all very good, boys and girls, looking at the graphs and saying that is that is a low number, but it's the best since September. Yeah. And if you actually go and look at the July and August stats, okay, we're on 17 now. We were a million miles away. Yeah. You know, we were early 20s. We're not talking, you know, a difference of 30 grand and 20 grand. It's tough out there. You have to realistically price. Don't take on overpriced crap, but make sure that you have something that can sell. Right, let's move on. Accumulative net sales. Now, this is, I think, a big one mm -hmm. because so far, you know, gross sales is less net sales. That means there's 117 house, 17 house and houses heading towards sell, general pipeline figures. So therefore, transaction levels are at this rate 10% off what they were in 17, 18, and 19. <laughs> dear, dear, are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. <laughs> Which shows, in my opinion, that in terms of the number of transactions, we are going to be we're going to be nearer the 1 million than we are the 1.1 or 1.2 at this rate. Yeah. I've spoken to various, I've spoken to Grania Gilmer, who's excellent, Anthony Codlin, who's excellent, Chris Millington yesterday from Numis, excellent. In terms of what the the biggest debate of all is not, is not around house prices, it's around transactional volume, and I've, and we're going to end last year at circa 1.2, 1.25 by the time the final figures come in, and I've heard figures ranging from 870 to 900 to a million for this year. Yeah. Um, the data the data is showing that it's it's around as it currently stands, the projection is 950 to to a million, which is on the light side. So you are absolutely right. You've got to increase your size of the pie. Having said that, it's, I don't think it's going to be a, a drastic position. And the longer the time goes on, the more the market normalizes around acceptance of the fact that mortgage, mortgage rates are where they are. Um, I think people will yeah. still, still move. I think the magic thing is this, is because of the Liz Trust budget, budget really did have a huge amount of fall throughs at the back end of, of 22, that's going to affect the transaction numbers you know, these numbers are, are not bad at all. So again, I'm, you know, around a million, Yeah. Th you know, and in the bad times, I can't remember how bad it got. It was around 700,000. Was it around 700,000? It was, it was seven, seven to 800,000. I've seen actually different figures relating to that. So it depends where you take the year. If you go Jan yeah. to Jan to December, uh, there are some that are April to April, which make it look even worse, depending on where you, you know, it's like, it's like lies, you know, 
what is it lies damn lies the statistics but these are stats i guess i've got to do the plug now these stats come from 20 ea part of 20 ci they supply this data they have an insight platform other platforms are available but they give me access to this so i can share it with you boys and girls and you can get this data or most of this data for your town uh, and i know you guys at the guild use this data as well yeah we give it to guild guild members uh, including in the membership yeah absolutely okay but it's like the most things this why why is data so important to prove you know what you're talking about even though i have just answered my own question um because it's a definition of trust trust builds confidence and and agents are instructed by their sellers based upon trust good stuff okay then we'll just whiz through a couple of these graphs uh just at the end because i think it's important again you being x countrywide you'll love this stuff yeah. um so probably just explain what you're looking at here gotta put my glasses on didn't i yeah, you best do. So yeah, gross sales and percentage of listing. Yeah, so the um the uh the listing the listing to sell ratios is the one is the way the way I call it effectively. So the amount of stock that is selling as a percentage of the stock that you've got new to the market. So you can see that it's trending pretty consistently with 16, 17, 18, and 19. The the heady days of 2021 are like we say full false. It's the frothiest market since we've seen since the late 80s, um, before the crash in the 90s um it's a perfectly good good ratio okay this week this 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 graph certainly caused consternation if, uh, among certain property commentators by when they when they put the percentage was 21.75 and everything else was in in the early to mid the mid teens and it was end of the world so this week just just for you commentators out there i've added the seven week weekly average of sale fall throughs a quarter of sales falling through on a week by week basis so we're not bad there, mate, are we? It looks, it looks okay. There are, with all of these figures, it's the granular detail that makes a huge difference. So there's agents that book a sale when they've agreed a sale, um, regardless of the forward chain. So the, the, again, the data is pulled by changes to CRM and changes to portal activity from 20 CR, loads of different sources, but it is driven by the agent's behavior. Um, this particular graph, it looks okay looks looks you know it's a little bit on the little bit on the high side but bearing in mind where we are i think it's manageable well let me just share with you this here and this here is i don't know if you can see now there's a huge spreadsheet and apologies for those that people that don't like spreadsheets but as ian says it's all in the detail the devil's in the detail so we've got october november december and this is the line here okay this is the gross sale okay this is the, sorry the fall through figures so yeah. this one here 40 40 38 49 yeah these are these are the end these are the stuff of of nightmares that that we, that the sell fall throughs were at the back mm. end of last year okay so mm. we have returned back to more normality and in fact we are below normality compared to the long term average so just bear that in mind boys and girls of a state agency when you um are worried about your stats okay one more let's keep going on this one so you should be able to see um okay so we've got that one there yeah. price changes as a percentage of listings anything that you want to mention about that um it is clear really clear that agents are um when they're going out to to see customers they're buying the instruction um really clear uh, i think the agents out there should talk of talk to the seller in a different way, not use language like I will definitely get you um, not use language like I think your home is worth. I think a, the great agent in today's market talks about strategy for success, talks about um, the bespoke marketing strategy for the consumer. 87% of consumers, according to Peter Knight, want a bespoke marketing strategy for their home. Um, and the other, the, so in so doing, you sit down and have a conversational dialogue with you, with your prospect about what the market is doing and it's wrong to say well last next door sold last year for 800 grand so let's try 850 that's now the wrong conversation you've got to adapt and be more honest and truthful with people because ideally what i'd like to see is less price changes coming to the market because agents are valuing it a better format in the first place yes that is utopic and it's um, probably a wish list that's never going to be delivered because it's a very competitive marketplace so if you are going to, to fly the kite in terms of pricing, then have a really clear contact strategy with your seller. 
Again, if I were at Countrywide today, running the region on the South Coast, my listers would have to go back and see the seller in their home every four weeks to talk about what's been delivered. Mate, 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 they can't even pick the bloody phone up and do their own vendor contact. You've got to, you've got to put the, whoever's out valuing has got to have their feet held to the flame so that they then go back and assess the marketing uh, response from putting the house onto the market. What? So the valuer has to take personal responsibility for the listing of the, of yeah. the and getting it sold. I mean, that's that, what, yeah, unbelievable. I mean, you would expect that and I, I'd hope that, but why, you know, we as an industry, we kind of put it on the market and then leave it to the next to sort out, don't we? Which is all yeah, pretty, pretty much it's because when you when the agents are valuing, they pin the tail on the donkey in terms of telling the customer what they think that they want to hear on price. Um, the, the art of a state agency is delivering constructive feedback and news to them, which might not necessarily be in their best interest, but it is the truth. Right. Let's move on. Fantastic insight there. Thanks, mate. Right. Let's, let's briefly spend a little bit of time looking at the uh, regional picture. Um, and we're looking at the stats and the way it works is this boys and girls is green is good and red is bad. OK, so you can see the general trends of where your area is going. OK, so we're looking at East Midlands and East and East of England. And again, as we can quite clearly see, there's more greens off on the right than there are. Yeah. On the left. Now, we can spend hours going through all this. These slides, by the way, boys and girls, are available to download on the YouTube link. If you go to the YouTube write up in the description, there'll be a link and you can download them and you can pour all over them to your heart's content. Again, these stats come from 20 EA and you get your own stats going uh, back uh, a couple of years. But again, so you can see what's happening in your town. So again, East Midlands looks like it's going in the right direction. Yeah. One huge thing which I am a massive fan of is the difference between listing price and sale price, which we've talked about throughout, and I will yeah. make no apologies. Again, it shows that the boys and girls in the East Midlands are doing quite well. East of yeah. England, probably it's a really bit generous. generous. Yeah. Well, I mean, we won't spend too much time. Just shout up if there's anything that catches your eye on these. Just, just one thing I should have mentioned before when we are talking about listing price. I spoke to Dave Anderson at Right Move a couple of weeks ago, and... Uh, last year, I think it's either 82 or 87% of stock was selling with the first agent. We're already back to the traditional marketplace where 60% of stock is selling with the second agent. Hey, do you know, I got so derided for that figure. People said right. that I was, I was a lying swine, but I tell you, it comes from right move. All hail the right move. Mr. Anderson, if you're watching. Yeah, lovely. We'll, we'll make sure we, t we tag him in. Well done, mate. Okay, then. Now, this is the inner London. So inner London yeah. is your... Uh, N, N, W, N, S, W, S, E is the central yeah. company. And, uh, okay. And again, the bit that's scaring me, and again, they've pulled their socks up slightly on their solds, which is this, which is the yellow line here. But the average price, oh, bloody hell, excuse my French. Um, there's a there's a difference of 23%. It was 36% last week in terms of what's, what they're putting on the market and what's selling. But the sale numbers are increasing slightly, aren't they? Yeah, the, I think that the London market, Ben said last week, didn't he, that it is a market in its own right. You know, it's, it's Ibiza from that perspective, and it, it does have different nuances. Um, I think there is strong activity that, that is due in London. They are expecting house prices to fall back less in London. I say they being the experts or the uh, analysts that I've spoken to, just because of it's a different overseas investment environment and different buyer profile. And also... House prices, especially in prime, have been dropping for the last three years. Yeah, correct. It's, yeah. it's, just a, it's not particularly good newsworthy stuff in the Daily Telegraph. Yeah, um, okay, let's move on. So outer, now to London doing really well. Mm. You know, it's almost, again, out of London. So that's basically anything, you know, think of the donut. So inner London is the whole of the donut. Yeah. And outer London is basically the, the gorgeous donut that's fried and golden uh, around the M25. Yeah. By the way, Ian, what's your favourite uh, donut flavour or filling? Mm, it's got to be jam, without a doubt. Okay, then. Good stuff. Tradi That's traditional. I, I like I like custard, you know. Do you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So does my mum. So does my mum, interestingly. Uh, your mum, your, it was your mum's birthday the other day, so... It was. Happy birthday to, to, to Mrs. Mac uh, from the UK State Agency. All to you, babes. Thank you very much. She'll love That's that. Lovely. Right, let's move on to Scotland. Again, Scotland doing its own thing. Yeah. The southeast, again, doing well there. Yeah. Okay. Um, again, these are all available to download 
in detail that you can have a look on the link if you want to compare your town uh, in the in the region. So Southwest again doing okay there. Good agent. Ben, ben called up Wales last last week, didn't he? About some fantastic agency. I have to second that. And and the same also for the Southwest. Really progressive, uh, really forward thinking with marketing strategies. They do. They kind of we. They're kind of out of the the the, the, the London BS and they just get on with it and do it. Yeah, it's really um, good. It's really interesting. Good I've, I've, I've been looking at some data about the top fifty estate agents who've grown their market share in twenty twenty two. Yeah. Uh, and you had to have a minimum number of listings, like 10 listings in the postcode before you were considered. Yeah. And there's a big chunk of them in Wales. They, they, they do really, really well. Um, West Midlands and Humberside. Again, I'm not sure there's much to talk about there. But again, mm -hmm. just those that you were watching might find that a benefit. Um, accumulative stats. Again, we've done some graphs on this, but I just thought it might be useful for people to see how the, cumulatively the stats are moving. And we've done some of these on graphs. Uh, interestingly, we did. We don't think we did it on net sales or growth. Well, we did it on net sales, but not gross sales. So I, I, um, I, again, oops, pardon me, um, the, uh, the what's the name, um, the alarm. Okay, so that those are the stats. Should we move on? Anything you want to say before we move on to Winchester? Yeah, just the, the overview is the market is the market, guys. Um, you've just got to work out how to adapt to it and overcome it. So um, it's, it's, what's the saying? I think it's easy It's easy to engage with the enemy until you get a punch in the face. So if the market is punching you in the face, how are you going to adapt to it? What's your strategy? And sit down and think about it. Have a towel over the moment head and think about how many, you know, what business you need, how many listings you need, what's your been sell ratios, what's your contact strategy, all that sort of stuff. Right then. So uh, we are now going to go to the beautiful city of Winchester and we'll just 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 to just to tell you I mean just look at and then we'll just pull this up now just to show the people in the world how wonderful Winchester is I mean let's just hold on there we go I should be able to see some lovely pictures now I mean yeah. this is lovely mate beautiful, beautiful. yeah beautiful yes. and yeah, really uh, look at that beautiful place anyway we're not part of the Winchester uh, tourist board let's crack on <laughs> Let's crack on. So uh, the first thing what we are going to do, so you should be able to see 20 EA at the moment. Yeah. Um, and on their insights platform, as I said, you can have this to yourself. And what we're looking at here, hold on, let's just move the graph. There we go. Is top left hand corner, the 1st of Jan 21 to the 28th of uh, Feb 23. Yeah. And let's look at the agents first, because again, agents are talking about themselves. Now, charters at the top there, yeah, I really do like charters. They're great, great. Yeah, they're I know. Nice. I know that. I know uh, Robin Elliot there. They set up. Interestingly, I left Winchester in two thousand seven, and they set up um, early two thousand eight. I think maybe late two thousand seven. Good business, well run. Heavy, heavy head count. So um, there's the old saying: drive for drive for show and putt for dough. It's you know they they have a big team, and so you would expect them per head count to do more business. Uh, but very well run, run business, great branding, um, and a, an old fashioned, they've got modern technology, but an old fashioned approach in terms of following up leads and really being very, very proactive. Again, boys and girls, go to their website and go and download their market insights report. They are, they make me go, wow. Okay. Interestingly, look at, look at, if you can look on the graph here, their prime in terms of slot tends to be around the mid to upper, you know, not the upper quartile, but getting towards the close. Obviously, I'm guessing up here probably Savills, but but this seems, I mean, that is a nice chunk there of yeah. the 600 to 750 mark. Yeah, um, they're a whole, they are a whole of market brand. Not yes. many brands actually deliver that in in uh, in agency. They've also got very strong land and new homes business as well. Looks like they've had a little bit of a rough patch in Jan and it looks like they've pulled, they've pulled it back up. Yeah, they yeah. had a bit of a rough patch in December. We can all have our off months, but yeah. let's just hope they get back. Right, uh, Belgrams, let's have a look. Yeah, Belgarum, that's the uh, old old uh, Roman name for Winchester, Venta Belgarum. Lovely. Um, and Guild members, know the guys there, absolutely fabulous uh, estate agency business. Punch way above above their weight. Uh, do it with grace and style. Um, 
very, very good or good company indeed. Again, you'll notice that they tend in terms of their market. Oh, oh, sorry, let's just put that back. Is that they tend to be a bit more flatter with their market share in terms of yep. price range, not so much at the bottom. Yep. Let's go and see SAVs. Okay. So SAVs, again, you would expect to be in the upper quartile. There's your million to million two. Yeah. Uh, is it interesting that Charters and Belgarum have got are like head and shoulders above everyone else? There is a yeah. big gap. That's quite strange in a state agency, isn't it? Yeah, it is. I, it is. The consumers in, in Winchester are quite discerning. They know they, they don't like bullshit. They like honesty and um, they recognise quality. So the, the you know, Charters and Belgarum do very well. Savills are a great company as well. That's, that's not meant to words. And they're much stronger in the one to two million pound mark than the other two. So that's their niche marketplace. How do you pronounce that? Dibbles, Dibbles? Dibbles, yeah. Dibbles, okay. Michael in Dibbles. Uh, good, good independent. Um, I'm surprised by the figures are actually doing more than I thought that they were from a perception perspective. Um, but they tend to be mass market. They're more estate orientated. So what Charters and uh, Belgarum have been very clever at is that they've hit the Victorian centre um, of Winchester, which is more commuter belt into the city. Whereas Dibbles, as you can see by price, are more estates on the outskirts. And, and would you would that match the fact that these states tend to be around the four to five hundred mark? Yeah, exactly that. Nothing wrong with that. It's a perfectly legitimate oh. um, business approach. Probably get better cross sales off the back of it, arguably. Indeed. But, um, but yeah, that, that's clearly their strategy. Let's go look at Winkies. Yeah, uh, I know the guys in Winkworth well. Again, quite up and down with their price range, and again, they they look like in the terms of their price range, six hundred to seven hundred. Yeah, they were very dominant in the in the um, Victorian part before Charters came. So they've pro they've lost a little bit of market share to Charters, is my opinion. Um, but it's a small team. They do very well still, and they do offer a good level of service. I know Dan in there very well indeed. He's been in he's been in the town for 10, 15 years. Good, good, strong agent. Martin and Co at two four three. Yeah, that, that's new. That's post my time in Winchester. I left in two thousand. Julian Bessie there and his team. Uh, honestly, exceptional. Comes from ex Vodafone, top right. chat. Yeah. I mean, again, I tell you, I've just noticed is if you look back at the prices, you can see the average price that they put yeah. their houses on the market at. So it's just, you know, Charter 646, Belgarum 676, Savills, there's your mill. Yeah. Like, do you know? I'll, and there, look, do you know? I, 423, you were absolutely right there, Ian. Yeah. Right then, let's go and look at Carter Jonas. Yeah, interesting. They, they again, they're sort of a brand that compete against the Belgarums, Charters, and Winkworths. You can sell that by price. Strong, strong um, new homes offering, strong commercial offering. Again, I don't know what's happened there. There might have just been a lot of new home stock. I don't know. But I mean, yeah. if you just move the date. If you move the date to there, they're flatlining a little bit, aren't they? They are. So, you know, I don't know. I'm sure there's a reason behind that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Knight Frank. Again, 1.4 million. So again, yeah. they are 50% more than Savills. Yeah. They tend to, to be listing a bit more. And they seem to be doing quite well. Well done, yeah. well done, Hamptons. Absolutely. Okay, Connells. Interesting. Spiking activity. That's interesting. Yeah, but look, you know what? they're doing well there. there. Yeah. Let's, hope, let's hope you're not overvaluing guys and you're actually putting on some decent stock. But Indeed. again, 320. Yeah, not yeah. bad. And then we'll finally leave it at Goad's Biz. They're a decent agent, aren't they? Yeah, goes to be strong in the large independent on the south coast. Uh, okay. They've always they've always struggled a little bit in Winchester, is the truth. Okay. Now let's move on to my favourite graph, which shows you how agents are actually physically performing. Okay. Now there's a lot yeah. of stats on here, but fundamentally, if you put a house on the market, Ian, it's whether you actually get the bloody thing sold or not. So I want yeah. you to totally ignore new instructions, yeah. market share, sort of the contract. I actually want you to look at these four columns, which is exchanged or withdrawn, because that is the only way a property will leave an agency, isn't it? Indeed. Yeah, correct. Okay. That's, um, the, that's the hole in the bottom of your bucket. It is. So if, therefore, if it's only going to leave you with one of two reasons, it's coming off the market yeah, or you're exchanging. Now, interestingly, mm -hmm. for every hundred properties that charters put on the market, According to this data, they exchange contracts on 56.3% of houses. Which is on the low side, isn't it? It is, considering the average is 60. Yeah. Bel Belgarum's 68. I mean, that yeah. is quite a difference. That's, you know, proportionally, that's almost 20% more proportionally. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. and again, if you if you look at the far right column price change, if I were out to, so I I love these graphs, and I saw the commentary you did last week about purple bricks, and I have a completely different narrative in my mind to that. Okay. Um, but, but if you uh, look at charters, if I was up against them and they're va valuing higher than I am, um, buying the instruction, I could use that language. I would refer to this, which is fifty percent of their stock. They get a price reduction on. They've got a they've got a withdrawn rate of forty three percent. So yes, you can go to them in the first instance. In fact, please do go to them in the first instance, but don't sign up to a long contract. Come back to me in a month's time if they haven't sold it. There you go, wise girls, that, boys and girls. That's why we have different people on each week who can look at the data. And I and I didn't realise that. That's you know, uh, Ian was huge in the not big in the game, huge in the game at Countrywide when Countrywide were a force to be reckoned with. Not that they are they are now, but it's when they were the big guns and we were afraid of them. Uh, but I would be quite pleased if I was the boss man or boss lady of Belgarums, wouldn't you? With regard yeah, to John and Alex, yeah, they do. They do the fact that I said they they punch above their weight, which is probably a bit uh, a bit cruel to them. They're a very very good estate agent. But then we go and look at Martin and Co and Winkworth and Hamptons, and they're doing a really good job as well. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, just for just for what's name and giggles, mate. Let's go and look at the posh range. Okay, okay. the million pound mark. Yeah. Just to see how the posh boys and girls are doing. Yeah. Okay. And again, look at this. So we're million pounds plus. Okay. Charters, 49% exchange. Yeah. Okay. And let's just look at their price. Um, hold on a second. Just need to move that away. Um, Savills are doing well, aren't they? Yeah, they are. Yeah. Yeah. But it did show that on that previous graph, albeit it was quite small and difficult to see. Yeah, and no, you would expect you would expect that, no, but this time I've just I've put it into price range. So I'm just looking at the million pound mark, remembering yeah. that sales, most of it is million pounds. But again, if I was if I was going, you know, if I was say Hamptons and going up against Belgarums, I could say, Mrs. Miggins, you're more, you know, you have a I, I I will exchange contracts to get you moved 72 percent of the time, whilst the others yeah. Knight Frank 43. So interestingly, yeah. we said Knight Frank uh, were, weren't Knight Frank growing their market share, weren't they? Yeah, they were, weren't they? That's they sure. were, yeah, yeah, they were, yeah. Yeah, let's just have a quick look. Knight Frank, where's that? Where have they gone? We did see where Knight Frank was. I don't know where they've gone. Oh, all sorts of out. Don't worry. Yeah. Uh, but we did say Knight Frank were growing their business. That could be the expense of exchanges. I don't know. Mm. Again, the beauty of the detail is the detail. Yeah. Give me some thoughts on this. I think the, the upper quartile in, in Winchester is um, quite a unique marketplace. It, it covers geographically quite a large area. And so the, there's always going to be skewing as a consequence of that. Um, I think that clearly charters are a whole of market brand, do very well. Savills are recognized in as the, by from perception, as the upper quartile brand for Winchester, in my opinion. Um, but, but clearly, as you can see on this on this chart here, they, they don't they don't dominate that marketplace, and lots of other agents are doing a good job as well. Indeed, I think if I was boss of Charters, Knight Frank, and Belgarums, I'd be wondering why Hamptons and Savills have a higher exchange rate. And again, there could be some areas of of improvement and development yeah. to up your game there, because you can earn money quite well out of that. And again, yeah. the Winchester property market is kind of not cocooned. But it is quite a unique market. It does protect itself even in downturns, doesn't it? Yeah, it really, it, it really does. It's on the periphery of of London, um, and it always has been. One of the I, I set up there in 1999, and the reason I did is that I knew that it was relatively recession proof, rel relatively. Um, and what happened in the 2007 marketplace when the the market crashed is that <clears throat> without a cartel, agents intuitively went out and did the right thing in terms of price reductions and changing pricing strategies. And so it just makes it very easy that if agents, again, without cartel, I must make that point, um, just intuitively know how to conduct themselves in the marketplace for the good of their customers, it just oils, it oils the wheels of industry much, much more. What do you mean by cartel? Um, uh, effectively, where you talk to each other and say, we're going to reduce our pricing by 10%. There was, there was no conversations with any agents at that time. No conversations about um pricing or fee structure or anything like that that's never never happened it's just that agents behaved in the right way in terms of giving the right advice to the customer it'd be fair to say that winchester does it does attract the right sort of people and actually the right type of agents as well which is lovely to hear obviously yeah. that's why you come from there big man <laughs> well yeah i tried 
Ian, thank you for your time today. Uh, you can see, boys and girls, why I invited Ian on this. He's not the boss of the Guild uh, for, for, for no reason at all. He's quite, a, not quite, he is extremely insightful and a man that I look up to and listen to his advice. So therefore, I'd like to leave the final words to Ian. Um, what would your message be to UK estate agents going into March 2023 with the way they should act and operate to ensure that they are using the market conditions, talk about house prices, talk about transactions and what actions they could be doing to ensure that 2023 is the best year possible for them? Uh, so um, house prices are house prices. What you lose on the swings, you gain on the roundabouts. It's all about transactional volume. What is your strategy to increase the passive marketplace so that people that might move if they saw the right opportunity? What is your strategy to increase your market share? Because if the size is reducing, increase your slice. And if you don't increase your market share, how are you increasing or monetizing the opportunities that you've got? The corporates are world class at turning one pound's worth of revenue into one pound seventy five of, of actual revenue. So um, what are the independent agents doing to increase the monetization of the process? Thank you for your time to, uh, today, Ian. If you are an agent and you would like the guidance and support of an affiliate program, then they only work on a one agent per town basis and your town might be available through the website guildproperty.co.uk. Is that the right one, mate? Correct, yeah. That's, that's memory, isn't it? Um, other affiliate programs are available. I just want to say that because we don't want Simon Whale and Relocation Agent Network to get uh, uppity about it. You will find the right one for you, but I certainly believe that estate agents, especially when things get a bit tough, you can, if you can come together and learn off each other and affiliate programs, you know, such as uh, Relocation Agent Network and the Guild and as such things as the uh, Federation of Independent Agents with uh, Graham Locke are fantastic places for you to come together, learn from each other. You're not competing agents and then you can go out there and run a better business. Ian, thank you for your time today. I know I would I'd be saying this, that I'd like to invite you back in a month's time to give your insight of the stats. I passed there. the test. That's great. Thank you very much. Ah, well, you'd already passed the test anyway. But thank you, mate. You've been an absolute star. And more thank importantly, you. thank you, boys and girls out there watching this video. If you want to download the, the slides, they're available in the write-up. They are not for publication, but they're for your own personal use. If you've got any feedback whatsoever, good and constructive, or even bad, again, put them in the comments, please, uh, so we can learn and uh, give you what you want, which is the, the information, I hope, of what's happening in the property market. Ian, thank you very much. Pleasure. Thanks, Chris.